hello, hello, and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. The trusted source for interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday, and previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday on YouTube at CastBox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Play Out One Coffee. I'm, of course, your host, that guy, James J., Alongside the leader of Squaw Squad, Coleco Yacht, who should be joining us later, uh, but who is here even when we're not even recording, the American Scooter Dust. I am proud to announce a new uh, little thing tonight that for every time we mention any uh, uh, WWE Hall of Famers that, have, uh, that are going to jail, I shall cut myself. Not really, though. And it was a good week for Wrestling Wit as we interviewed Sunny Z from uh, on Monday, um, David Mercury on Tuesday, and uh, Peter Olizando on Wednesday. Three incredible interviews. Uh, two new countries to put on the map for Wrestling Wit. Um, that brings our grand total up to 19 countries that we've done interviews in. Um, oh, we the NATO of podcasts. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, definitely unique and interesting interviews. Um, definitely go into the archives to check those out. This upcoming um, Tuesday, we have uh, Paige Rolo from uh, Spain, actually. Uh, we talk about that, wrestling in other countries, including Finland, wrestling Starbuck. Um, his love of um, Dr. Pepper and a hell of a lot more. Definitely a fun chat with a, an incredible individual. Um, and this upcoming Wednesday, we have Joe Bravo um, from Vienna, um, Austria, um, under, um, uh, wrestling underground, um, that promotion where we've interviewed Betty Boa. Uh, we talk about that wrestling in Japan, making a Japanese woman faint, and being in a music video as well. Um, I, I think that there has to be a little bit of an asterisk. Not Joe E. Bravo. Joe Bravo, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, not that Joey Bravo. Still, fascinating, fascinating interview. I've heard it myself. Love it. Ah. Oh. And you could hear some of those, a, a bit of those interviews right now. You mentioned, you know, loving CM Punk and Tom Brady. You just love the controversial yeah. figures, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love, I love, uh, I love them. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I, I'm, when I was a kid, I liked to piss people off. <laughs> <laughs> Not like in a bad way, like for example, here in Barcelona, we have uh, FC Barcelona, who's a, a great team, big team in Europe and in the world for soccer. So when I was a kid, I hated that club because everyone was a fan of that club. So I ended up supporting Madrid for like three or four years. Then I just realized that that wasn't it because I hated Madrid more. <laughs> so that's that, that's the base of, 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 of my... Um, taste in, in, in scenes or figures, let's say like that, you know? Actual match between uh, you and Zelina versus Chabella. Oh, yeah. That's a few years ago. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was um, that was not, uh, not uncalled for, I would say, because I'm quite cocky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe? Yeah. I was running my mouth during the training session, and I think I had it coming. And Chabella gave me, or in that case, us the receipt. <laughs> well, I mean, she may have given you the receipt, but you did. You and Selena did pick up the W. Yeah, we did because the numbers don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then on the 11th, we have Brian Leo. On the 12th, we have uh, Rain Victoria. 
On the 18th, we have um, Ozzy Miller. On the 19th, we have Nina. And on the 24th, we have Ozzy Blaze. Oh, I thought you were going to say Santa Maria. No. Um, I believe we're done putting ourselves over. Um, I'm, I'm never done doing that. Hell, I put myself over in my dreams. That's the only place you'd be over. But you, hey, hey, you know what? In my dreams, I stopped to promote wrestling with entertainment. Well, at least you don't... Who the hell am I smiling and sticking my thumb up for? Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> you realize nobody can see you right now. Like, uh, uh, damn it. All right. And <laughs> you're living up to your American uh, name as well with a fucking bandana on your head. Hey, hey, you got to pay extra for that. How do you know? No. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I am wearing the bandana. I, yeah, I, I guess because it is, in fact, the start of, uh, of Pride Month. I was going to say American Badass, but... Well, that too, because I am, in fact, wearing an Undertaker shirt, as you know, that I got in the third grade! <laughs> yes, because Scooter Dust, Dust still has the body frame yes. of a third grader. Yeah, and remember, I'm 40. It's, uh, we are wrestling with the news, and it was a great day for wrestling as well. Um, especially if you were a TNA fan, as, um, Jordan Grace made her NXT debut, um, surprising many when she challenged, um, Roxanne for, um, the NXT Women's Championship at uh, Battleground. I, I will say this. Yeah, I've got my DVR set to usually collect everything. And, you know, I I will admit I missed this because I've been dealing with a lot of, you know, uh, IRL stuff. But I was home for when this happened. And even I had to literally go to my DVR and you know, rewind and whatnot just to see this again because it was that surprising. You, normally, NXT doesn't pull off surprises like this. The and... WWE in general doesn't do surprises like that. Well, I mean... I mean, Sean Spears was a big... Uh, no. It was a shock. Not it was really. a shock. I didn't, say, I, I, did, I, I didn't say it was a great shock. It's kind of like the shock you get when you, you're sitting in a chair that does yeah, that. Like, 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 yeah, like a, uh, you know, uh, the, the static electricity. Yeah. You know, when you rub your, when you're in slippers and you just, uh, and you start chasing someone just so they can do, ah, that was mildly annoying. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, it's uh, I mean, it's more along the fact that it's, they really brought it home. They really, like, like, yep, TNA knockouts champion. And Vince is rolling over in his grave. Hey, he's not even dead yet. Is he? Yeah. He hasn't faked his death yet. Oh, wait, he has. Never mind. Illuminati. Um, but yeah, sure. my God, we saw Jordan at the Royal but, Rumble in yeah. January. Um, I don't necessarily feel like this does anything for WWE unless I, you know, it, uh, TNA becomes like a developmental for them, a developmental for the developmental, if that makes sense. I yeah, since. Again, they're trying to remove the developmental stigma from NXT. They wa they really want it to be seen as a third brand. They really want it to be a place where you know, wrestlers actually want to go and might actually want to stay for a bit. Instead of just, you know, 
trying to get out of there as fast as possible and go to Raw or SmackDown. Well, I mean, the so, only, I feel like the only people that really feel that way are the ones that aren't, uh, that were actually independent wrestlers before, you know, coming to uh, WWE. I mean, if, if NXT literally traveled for house shows outside of Florida, um, you know, it's, it's one thing. This, this is good for the WWE. It really is. Uh, because one, it's, this is like, if it wasn't hammered home before, this does it. This is gone. This would have never happened in a million years under Vince. No. And the fact that it's the champion, it's not even anyone other, like any other regular talent. It is the champion. Right. And, you know, by all means, they could have pulled probably any other former WWE talent back just to do this. No. They, they, they want, they got Jordan. And supposedly, if I read the news correctly, this is not including the Royal Rumble. She's got three appearances scheduled. One was the debut, and she's getting six figures for those three appearances. Don't you think that's all? Maybe I don't know. A little high. Uh, for uh, uh, I'm 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 going to bet you it is a hundred thousand oh. dollars. Yeah. So, so it, it's like, when they say six figures, it's literally the lowest six-figure amount <laughs> it could be. That's not a, uh, that's not a, uh, you know, knock at, you know, you know, women pay gaps or any shit like that. It's, it's to make it, it, it is to make it sound more impressive. Probably. And it's not, you know, because, you know, Jordan Grace woman. It's because, you know, Jordan Grace TNA. Ill. Yeah, it's two two jobs, and no, this I mean is... TNA ill. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, when you look at it, Jordan Grace has now become like a uh, a flag bearer, you know, in the experiment of a a, a true working collaboration that you know we we. Would have happened, you know, when hell froze over. See, A E. See, now that you know, AEW and TNA's, you know, shitty thing, uh, you know, pandemic crossover. Which, let's face it, we now realize that the only reason they worked together was because of <laughs> the pandemic. Yeah. Um, it's. I mean, again, the possibilities. Um, and does do do? And I hate to use this phrase, but do they have the balls to have NXT have the NXT Championship go over there? Because remember, doors swing both ways, and that was posted. By former TNA superstar Drew Galloway, I mean McIntyre, <laughs> a former TNA world champion. Uh, but who... let, let's <laughs> talk about yes, that look, yes. for one second. Let's say Trick does go to TNA. Who do you put Trip against? Tri- let's see. Who? Oh, oh, that's easy. You put you put Trick against Moose. I mean, it's kind of like the obvious choice. Oh, come on. Don't. Why? Because they're black? No, because (laughs) Moose is arguably the biggest star that they have that could. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I mean, no. uh... Literally, no slack to Eddie Edwards, but I don't necessarily feel like people are clamoring to buy tickets to see Eddie. PCO. Okay, yeah, that would be good shit. 
Hell, you know what? Save it. Oh no, wait, they're AEW now. Fuck. Oh, uh, Joss Alexander. Oh, oh my god, how fitting would that be? You know, because, you know, I mean, NXT also became all ego. That wrestling. is correct. Um, Ethan Page made his debut uh, on the same episode, correct? Yep, the same episode and thrown right into the main event. <laughs> yeah, they put him, they went right, they went right for uh, uh, Trek versus, oh. you know. And you know what? You can't tell me that that's not trying to build something to Alex, to Josh Alexander. That screams Ooh. that they're going to want Josh Alexander at, at, at like, all, not, well, I guess it's at, at the front of the men's side of this. Do you think it's going, it's going to... It's going to continue being a relationship between TNA and NXT. It, that... it, it, it's going to be like sparingly. They're not going to. They're not going to overdo it. Like I mean, they they, know, they, like they, they, they yeah. No, they learned from you know when you know they had one person from WCW showing up. You know after the invasion. You know uh, yeah, before the invasion truly began. And they they got a they, there's a lot of like you know waters to test with this, but this is getting people talking. This is get this is the whole point is not to drive all the eyes at once. It's to bring over a few of the eyes at a time. This is the this is the mistake. Tony Khan never... The, the, the mistake Tony Khan always makes. Right. It, it is a... For the pro wrestling, really is a slow and gradual business when you want to succeed. So, they should definitely not have Trick Williams beat, um... What was his name? Um... Oh, fuck. What? Ethan Page? No, no. Um... Josh Alexander? No. Moose? Oh, oh, oh wait. Uh, by the way, wait a minute. Since it, this was implied on Twitter, a potential Moose Drew Ga uh, Gallo McIntyre, uh, a challenge has been issued. So this is going on. This is... This is gonna go beyond NXT. If you if they really wanted to, they can. Um, I mean, but, I mean, Drew McIntyre is literally the biggest, it, it, you know, the biggest stars they got right now. I don't necessarily think that they want to, you know, waste the match. I mean, on a ima ima that. imagine all the people. Imagine all the people you could put up against Punk. Yeah. From from Impact. And get great matches out of. Well, I mean... Punk this, would, is, this is... Punk would have to actually have a match with a WWE superstar first. He still hasn't done that. Gee. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean... Uh, um... It, oh, man. The, the prospect of this... Makes you know the, the future of pro wrestling a little bit brighter. It, it you know it may not. It's a, it's a wait and see type thing, and you know it's just it's 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 something we've always kind of wanted. Maybe not at the time we really wanted it, but I mean hell, we got you know the Rock. And Roman, you know, in the same ring. True. So now, 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 now it's essentially uh, a never say never. I mean, they should definitely not have uh, 
Trick Williams beat Rich Swan outright, right? I mean, is Rich Swan the champion anymore? Um, I don't think he's ever recovered since then. <laughs> uh, well, some, um, I mean, let's not get a, you know, a, a big, small head here. Um, I, lo I love the fact that, you know, whenever, when AEW talent comes over to um, WWE, especially NXT, they put them over, like, immediately. Um, you know, obviously Lexus King is the best example of that. Yeah, unless they're Sean Spears, of course. <laughs> well, he was there was the beginning. He double. Yeah, ten, ten, yeah. ten. Oh, that, that was so much better. But he was also really skinny hmm. when he was Ty Dillinger too. I think that hair too. Yeah, uh, yeah, like a, a man bun ponytail. He had the only man bun ponytail. That had no other hair around it, so mm. kudos to you, Mr. Spears and Mrs. Royce. Well, um, you know, talking about, uh, you know, people coming into WWE right now, um, a few people that may be on their way yeah. out. Um, Ricochet and, um... Well, let's start with Ricochet. Ricochet's contract is coming up sooner rather than later. Um, as of right now, nothing has been signed, um, if you believe Rimmer and Innuendo. Um, and there are outside promotions wanting to bring Ricochet into their promotions if he doesn't choose to re-sign with WWE. Um, in all... In all honesty, why would WWE re-sign um, Ricochet? He's not necessarily... Speed Champion! Huh? Speed Champion! Uh, why are you talking about uh, Tony Khan? He's the... No, he's not the champion of taking speed. <laughs> he is, of course... WWE's reigning speed champion in, in a format that only Ricochet could qualify for. That's what, um, um, that's what she said. So, I mean, Samantha? Yep. Uh, Samantha, talk your boy out. Talk your boy down. Um, the only way, the only way I honestly see Ricochet leaving is if he really does get jealous of Samantha's success. Um, I, I I don't see Ricochet uh, not resigning. He he's clearly resigning. If they offer him a a contract, yeah, he's resigning. I I mean, they they haven't done terribly with him. They've done well with him. In what sense? I mean, uh, the Twitter of Twitter. Inter, inter, Intercontinental, United States title. Hell, he's beaten Joe at Mania. He beat Joe at Mania? Yes. I don't remember that. It, it, it was one of the big four. I, I, was it 35? It, no, he, he was uh, in the tag team match with Alistair. Oh, that one. No, uh, then it was 34? No. No, then it was Summer Slam? I mean, his, literally his biggest match was losing to Logan Paul. Not Brock Lesnar in, in Saudi Arabia? Nobody remembers that. I do. Well, give me the personality that doesn't remember that. <laughs> oh, it was... No, wait, no. Oh God! Never mind. Stomping grounds. Wow. But it. You but it. Off. But wait. But that was Ricochet's first uh, singles title on the main roster. But I mean, yeah, Intercontinental Champion. But who beat him for that Intercontinental Champion? Gunther. Uh, and Gunther Samantha went on. Irvin beat him for it. Uh. No. Oh well. He lost it in the bedroom. 
I mean, I uh, think a lot of people wish that Samantha was Intercontinental. I mean, champion. he's he's in his in his six years. Six years. It's only been those six years. Yep. Uh, okay, he's a king of the ring. He he's beaten Drew McIntyre in a king of the ring. He uh, it was a first round match, but then Ricochet lost to Baron Corbin, so I guess that kind of that old myth stuff. Uh, he was part of Hogan's team. Uh, for you know, Crown Jewel means next to nothing. Uh, uh um. Part of Team Raw, but lost that Survivor Series, the one with NXT. Um, uh, he eliminated. He he uh, is the fifty percent eliminator of Brock Lesnar from the twenty twenty Royal Rumble. He was eliminated by. No, uh, it was Drew and Ricochet. They they were. Ricochet went after him, and then Drew uh, took him out. Remember? No, that that was one hundred percent Drew McIntyre. Do not give uh, Ricochet the credit for that. Oh, uh, cause a let's see, Ricochet hit him with a low blow. Okay. Do you not re- do you not remember that? That they that caused um that clearly caused uh. uh Let's see. Oh yeah, the the SmackDown World Cup. That Shane McMahon one. No, that was the 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 the, the friggin' cup. Uh, the the to 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 Wayne to the Mock Twain Cup. Um. Uh, the the trophy that was like AJ's. Um. So what you're saying is that WWE might actually see some type of value in him. Yeah, yes. I mean, uh, let's see. Intercontinental Championship Ray takes to Johnny Knoxville. Uh, I mean, the man, the man has beaten Shanky. Uh, Who hasn't beat Shanky? Um, another name that is looking to resign. Um, maybe he's not. Um, you tell me. Chad Gable. Um, Chad Gable's contract is coming up. Um. Uh, oh, uh, he's resigning clearly. Come on. Would he though? Because they, you know, he he had the opportunity to be a big baby face star. And but but now he's really leaning into the heel, and it's working. Well, I mean, of course it's working. It's Chad Gable doing it, but I I just feel like every time he's right at the surface, they push him back down, and he has well, to start from scratch. Well, let's see if uh, you know, let's see if they can turn him into Kurt Angle. Well. You know what? That would be awesome. But you know, he needs to have he needs to get a title run at some point in order to do that. The, 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 something is le- they're leading something to this, and it's not going to be you know uh, main eventer Otis or main eventer Tozawa. Um. I mean, yeah, it doesn't, it really doesn't make sense to do anything with Otis and Gable. But then where do you go from there? You know what I mean? And then what happens to Tosawa and Maxi? Oh, well, Maxine can promote that, you know, the that new movie that uh, she's in. She's in a movie? You know, they, uh, there's that sequel to X. You know, you remember the the uh, never mind, because there's a movie coming out that's a, the third movie in uh, Ty West's uh, Maxine trilogy, as he calls it, 
Uh, the first was X, about a 1970s uh, yeah, amateur uh, yeah, porn making group that tries to make a porn at a farmhouse only to be you know, massacred by the owners. And then the, the follow up to that was called, was called Pearl uh, after the old woman in that movie. It was a prequel. Uh, but the main character that survived in X, that first movie, her name was Maxine Mink. And not Maxine Dupree, um, but it's spelled Maxine with three X's. Of course. Like this book. Uh, so, and now there's the third one, which is taking place in yeah, 1980s New York. You know, and, and it's actually literally called Maxine. So, may, maybe she actually goes nuts and, you know, starts, like, killing people. <laughs> wow, that is a dark turn of events for Maxine. Hey, come on. I would, I really, I really want to see Maxine succeed. And it's not, and it's not because, it's not because of how she looks. I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely invested in her feelings. It's like, you, 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 you see her frown. You, you want to frown. You see her smile. You want to, you want to jump for joy for her. She definitely got the know how to make the most of your TV time. Uh, yes. From, um, from Chad Gable. Um, you know, like I said, Chad Gable, chicken, a uh, chicken salad maker. Um, and she's getting that from him, and you know it works. What she does, I mean, works. I will say this: I kind of wanted to know what Sammy said to her that she turned down. It's like, hey, listen, are you okay? Or it's like just stay in gorilla, or uh, <laughs> we'll save that for Netflix. Or, or was it? We'll go for shawarma later. Mm. Um. On the, uh, you know, Chad Gable is maybe re-signing with WWE. Um, the other Gable, uh, Chad this Gable is, Stevens. I, oh God, I can't believe this. He has signed with the Buffalo Bills. Oh my God. Well, you know, the, the Bills couldn't get any more worse. Um, but... Uh, congrats. We, I guess this is now the, um, is this the, is this the actual first successful WWE wrestler to sign with a team post-career? Um. Because Brock tried and failed. Yeah. I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Um, congrats, you're on a, you're on the team from New York that nobody remembers. Like, how many football teams does New York have? Two! Wrong! <laughs> Wait! Three! Three! Buffalo! Oh, Buffalo doesn't count. And you'd be right, they don't. <laughs> This is definitely a money grab. This isn't something like, oh, I'm passionate about football, so I'm going to pursue yeah. this. Yeah, this is a, um, yeah, I'm, I'm too late for Paris, but I need cash. Yes, 100%. Like, there's not even, there's a, he, didn't, it, he doesn't even get a signing bonus. He got a rookie deal, which means... He can be released within before he even plays an actual yard. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't even. They don't even have to play him. They don't even have to put him in practice. Hmm. If they want to, if they yeah, that's that's the thing. It's a standard deal. There is nothing special about it. This is a hard hard come down for Gable Stevenson. Like, congrats. You were a, a, a America's sweet hunk for a second. And now you're you're grasping every last fame straw you can. 
very true. Um, but you know, we could talk about that remotely until the calcs come home. Um, oh no, I'm done. That that's it. I think I made the point very uh, succinctly. No, definitely. But um, on the opposite end of that spectrum, WWE's biggest star Becky Lynch has not re-signed with WWE, um, opting to take some time off and um, you know spending time with family, if you believe rumor and innuendo. Um, if you believe uh, the coked up head of Dave Meltzer, she's going to um, AEW. <laughs> oh man, he really did get into Uncle Tony's coke. If... if Truthfully, I mean, if you believe in any, that, that there's any realm of possibility that Becky Lynch will sign with AEW, then there, there is definitely a bridge okay. I, I will sell you. Because... Okay, I, 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 will, I will make this promise, and I will put it in writing. I will sign a contract for this. Yeah? The day... If Becky Lynch ever signs and shows up at AEW without Seth Rollins being anywhere around, I will transition into a female. Okay. Well, you won't be able to go to Oklahoma, but um, good for you, man. Oh, I'm going to go to Oklahoma, and then I'm going to go to Idaho. Was it Idaho? Oklahoma. Both. Oh, I, I, Idaho did something else where they they're not allowing, you know, all the people. So, you know what? Fuck the potatoes. I'll grow my own. I can take a shit. Matt Damon taught me how. Wow, that's uh, pretty prestigious. Matt Damon. What? He taught everybody. Did you ever watch? Did you ever see The Martian? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he grows potatoes in his own shit, hmm. and some and some shit of the other astronauts. Damn, was he was still alone. What, what for the other astronauts? <coughs> I mean, I, apparently in Mars they vacuum pack your shit. Hmm. Just, I mean, just for like, you know, creative plot device later, like, awesome. Like, why does why I was wondering why did shit need to be vacuum sealed like that and placed in a bin on the surface of a planet you're not really going out onto the surface for that much. Anyway, either way I'm getting off topic here. Uh good let's for go Becky back to wrestling, please. Good for Becky Lynch for taking some time off. It's yes. well dissolved. Um yes. Bad wait. for Matt Damon. And Matt Damon. Um whenever she does decide to return I'm I'm sure it's going to be a banger. After banger. After banger. After burger. Um, talking about um, who re-signed, not re-signed on the WWE spectrum, Ooh, on the weird. AEW spectrum, um, they lost a lot of people. Uh, Arn uh, Anderson, Mark Henry, and Jake Hager all confirmed that they are no longer working for AEW. Their contracts expired. They decided not to renew. Check one, two. Yep. Oh, but wait, there's more. Yeah. Or at least, or, for, or at least you know, since there's a, the, since most of the people that uh, TNA cut, we don't really know. There is one name that stood out to me from TNA's list, and that's R.D. Evans. And if you were an early uh, internet pro wrestling fan, uh, and you lo and you loved learning about the terrible gimmicks known as wrestle crap, R.D. Evans was the man who coined the term wrestle crap and started that site. So. You know, the, the, the archive for every terrible gimmick in the world and the Gooker Award 
for the worst gimmick and angle of the year. That's where that comes from. So, plus I kind I kind of knew uh, RD just a little bit before you know he um you know took got a le- left us you know message board visitors behind. So, uh, but do you see swag? Do you see Hager Swagger going back to WWE? Mm-hmm. Hell no. Do we? No, I, I'm like, nope, can't see him in ROH. That's the same company. Yep. Uh, MLW. Um, you know, he was pretty successful at the A, at the MMA stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I mean, he only came to AEW because Jericho asked him to. They were friends. I mean, uh, if I pose as, uh, you know, um. Uh, other Chris Jericho, can it, if I ask him to go to the WWE again, I think he would. But would WWE want him back? He was well, very much a he was very much a, a Vince McMahon guy, I would say. You know what? If I was him, I go <laughs> I go to Triple H and be like, "All right, it's either me or Del Rio." <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, obviously they take uh, uh, they would take Mark Henry back. Um, you know he did a lot of outside WWE work for them. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, including you know he met me, so yeah. Um, and you know he was a part of um, uh, uh, you know the Special Olympics and all of that stuff. WWE Hall of Fame, or um, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities that he came back. Um, and why wouldn't you want Arn Anderson in, you know, your company? You know, unless you're AEW and you don't understand what you have. I mean, the only, I th- the only reason they take, <laughs> um, they take Arn back is because of Cody and basically just to set the road, set the set up the acquisition of MJF. Hmm. That's the only reason I would see them taking Anderson back. They don't need Art Anderson anymore, right? Pro wrestling doesn't need Art Anderson anymore. I, I wouldn't say that. But... Pro re- pro wrestling needs Art Anderson as much as pro wrestling needs Ric Flair. Oh well, that that's true. We don't necessarily need Ric Flair anymore, you know. He's just... I, I mean, we've gone through so many Ric Flairs. Yes, that we have. Yeah, the, yeah. He he's like an android by now. I have I have uh, seen it. I have been to the Ric Flair production facility uh, under the Hoover Dam. <laughs> Um, you know, I actually take back what I say about Mark, them bringing back Mark Henry. Um, yeah. it's main event time. It's time for the main event. Like that, oh, you yeah. have Mark Henry. That's what you waste him on. Uh, if you're gonna have Mark Henry, you know, have him. Uh, he's clearly got to like. Ma- he's clearly has to marry somebody just so he can pass off his theme song. Hmm. Um, well, that kind of brings me to something that Mark Henry said. Um, he thought, he thinks that it'd be a great, um, thing if they brought back the Nation of Domination. Um, with, and he would like the Velveteen um, Dream to be a part no! of that. No! Uh-uh, no, no. Good night, everybody. Um, the other members that he'd like to be a part of that is uh, Joey Ryan, um, oh, David yeah. Starr, <laughs> and Alberto <laughs> Del Rio. <laughs> oh, you motherfucker. The nation, <laughs> they will be known as the Nation the, of Cancellation. Um, huh, I thought it was going to be the Nation of Masturbation. <laughs> um, like, no, mass... that's Tony Khan. M M A S S, um, 
Uh, well, you know, speak, going for that, um, how, uh, I find I find this very interesting. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Chelsea Green's husband went to Mexico and got stem cell therapy. Um, Zach Ryder? Yeah. And that's interesting, how? Huh? It's stem cell therapy. I mean, Rey Mysterio does it. I uh, yes, and Shotzi did it uh, for her arm. Tommaso Ciampa did it for recovery as well. Um, but like Ryder, I think got almost every cell replaced. If I'm if I'm reading this correctly, well, maybe he's in he'll fact be, maybe he'll be a oh, competent wrestler now. Uh, he's calling himself the Stem Cell King. Oh God, he's a fucking moron. It's stem cells. Stem Celsi Green. Uh, Celsi Green! Oh my god. Oh my god. Quick! Somebody get booking on the line! Well, we've been talking about um, re-signing, and I don't think the, any, the thing bigger when it comes to re-signing is for media rights. And... AEW's <laughs> is coming up fairly soon. Um, they have until July to sign, and the negotiations at this time have been said to be disappointing for Tony Khan. Um, Tony was very high on the fact that they were going to get a massive deal, um, a huge deal. It was going to be great. Um, for the media this time around um and it seems like it just isn't that um dave Meltzer would tell you otherwise but dave Meltzer is a uh stooge so you can't necessarily believe what he says um what are the possibilities that aew is not on tnt Slash CBS, uh, TBS, I'd well, say. Well, um, in uh, September, well, October. Media rights and TV rights kind of two different things. So, are we are we talking like the we're talking the uh, broadcast? The broadcast, yeah. Hmm. I believe that's what it is. Um. You know, to, uh, yeah, Tony was really hoping that you know, um, you know WBD Warner Brothers Discovery <coughs> was going to have them on uh, streaming by this point. And again, Tony forgets. How long did it take for the uh, the WWE to get streaming? Um, I mean, almost fifty years. Thirty years, if we're if we're going by, you know, K, just kayfabe. <laughs> Thirty years. Why do you think? Why do you think no promotions have really flourished on streaming? I mean, you can't you, you can't say the NWA has really flourished. Um, I mean, they were on YouTube and they didn't flourish, so, I mean... Yeah, I mean... Hell, I'm using... I'm using AI to help me rebook the NWA from the past, so... Oh, by the, by the way, some uh, AI uh, chatbots know wrestling with entertainment, so... And I didn't have to do anything. I just asked them if they ever heard of us. Uh, hmm. And they knew us? Yeah. I mean, they're basically glorified search engines, but still. <laughs> well, great. Now we're going to be uh, targeted when Skynet uprises. Uh, well, hopefully they will target... Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, damn it. I can't think of who they should hate. Um, People uh, that we yeah, don't uh, like. Yeah, like, you know... Uh, like the thirty-four, I mean thirty-fifth 
<laughs> 45. Um, um, are, are we are we at that time? Is there is there anything else to talk about before we um, or are we even going to even talk about it? No, nope, okay. Should should we talk about it? <laughs> um, well, I know what we have a lot to talk about. Um, but um, no, I mean the last bit of news was the media rights for AEW, and if they don't get the deal that they want money wise, are they going to stay mm. on uh, TV? TV? Yeah. Uh, the answer is no, and Tony will do what he always does: create something that <laughs> with his money. Okay. So the It'll be like, oh yeah, now yeah, what? Well, yeah, tune into it on a you know, on a, <coughs> which means he'll create his own streaming. He'll figure. He'll realize this, and oh, and then he'll be like, oh, look at me, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. You should all be doing like me. And they'll be like, we were doing this like way before you were uh, you left your daddy's ball sack, Tony, so Yeah. Um Which was just the other day. Just the other day, eh? You really sounded Canadian with that. Good. Uh, um Okay. Oh oh and then Chris Jericho has left the Rampage announced team. He was still on Rampage? He was still on the announced team. Well it tells you how long I've uh, how long it's been since I've seen Rampage. Um, so yeah. Uh, that makes perfect sense. My uh, my suggestion was that we were going to get wrestling on the pop channel again. Hey, I, I want access back. Verizon, get with it. Alright. Um, I think that will conclude our coverage of uh, the news this week. And now a quick word from our sponsors. So, Rogue Energy, the only gaming drink company in the world with four unique product lines to suit your task at hand, whether it be juices, shakes, smoothies, and everything else in between. Their low-calorie, no-sugar energy formula is the perfect alternative to sugar-filled canned energy drinks and sodas. Their extreme formula provides the most energy, focus, and sports performance possible. Their hydration line offers focus, ingredients without the added caffeine. Drink it anytime you're thirsty. And their shake formula is so delicious. Who doesn't love a cookies and cream, zero-calorie energy milkshake? First and foremost, they've designed every Rogue product line with performance and effectiveness in mind. It is critical that you look at the nutrition panels of drinks when comparing options. There are countless soft brands out there that are presenting low quality, poorly dosed formulas that amount to expensive caffeine water. Every formula they produce is designed with optimal levels of high quality ingredients. Additionally, you won't find a powdered gaming drink brand that dissolves better. No need to have chalky textures in your drink. Their taste profiles are unmatched, specifically designed for gamers, athletes, students, entrepreneurs, people with hectic schedules, individuals with low energy, podcasters who can't shut up, people who are health conscious, and so much more. Great as both a pre-workout and as a coffee energy drink replacement. Specifically designed every Rogue product line to be the best gaming drink on the planet. Rogue energy, more energy, more focus, more wins. Use promo code Wrestling E for ten percent off your next purchase. And we are wrestling with WWE King and Queen of the Ring. It was last um uh it was last Saturday. Um it took place in uh Django Fett, Saudi Arabia. Um, at the Pontiac Silverdome, uh, attendance was 40,000, um, impressive number. It didn't seem like there was that many people there, but, um, why would Wikipedia lie to me? Oh my god, I, I've got a big piece, I got another big piece of news after we do this, so, let's, uh, uh get into this. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's only five matches on the show. 
Um, yeah. So, not a lot to review, not a lot to write home about. Um, I thought it was a decent so somewhat predictable. Um, yeah. And it just seemed like the crowd wasn't maybe as into it as they necessarily could have been. Um, yeah. But yeah. that is just my opinion on this. So, what say you, Scoodle? I mean, yeah, it was... This was a mid-level show. I hate the fact that they're going back so soon. In, in November. November? Yeah. They usually like, do November. I know, but with everything going on... Like, come on, man. This is not fair anymore. Like, yeah, you're a business. You got to expand like, globally. But, you know, that, that that's why you have divisions. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to, like, book a... I don't want to have to, like, a, book a... You know, have a passport just so I can go see pro wrestling. <sighs> I mean, you're getting AEW uh, Forbidden Door. That is true. At the, uh, yeah, the Irritable Bowel Syndrome Arena. Oh, I thought it was at, uh, um... No, no, it's it's not at, uh, Arthur Ashe. Okay. That's yeah, they, the, they that's have the week a... after. Yeah. Um, so let's get into it. Um, you got Liv Morgan defeating Becky Lynch to win the Women's World Championship in 16 minutes and 25 seconds. Um, in case people did not realize, uh, Liv Morgan clearly was channeling Britney Spears. Uh, Becky Lynch was channeling Anne Hathaway from The Devil Wears Prada. Is that confirmed? Yes, yes, that is... Um, it is, it is, it is one of the prominent outfits she wears in the movie, and it, it, it's also, it, hello, it's a pantsuit. It literally is. She could yeah. literally get a job at a magazine and wear it again. Right, true. Um... I think it was an okay match. For whatever reason, it didn't necessarily click for me. It wasn't a bad match, but it kind of felt like they were just exchanging moves to each other for some reason. The, yeah. The only the only part where there was maybe you know psychology to it was when Dominic Mysterio, you know interfered and you know obviously that was good shit and i like that um but it just it seemed like it took a long time to get there um you could have done this in well this is 16 minutes you could have did this in seven or eight minutes and you could have still got the same result honestly you probably could have you probably could have put Becky over and done the done the result in a st- in the cage. But how would have Liv gotten another title match? Uh, the, do we really have to like? Do we really have to explain that? I mean, you still have Dominic. Uh, you know, you have you still have Dominic interfere. But Becky wins in 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 Saudi Arabia. And then you have the finish on Monday that we well, I mean, got. It, honestly, the cage match was to write Becky Lynch out of the story. Yes. Because, you yes. know, she doesn't but... have a rematch clause to uh, hold to when she comes back. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, everybody, you know, was paying attention to the kiss anyway, so. Right. And Michael Cole just... Yelling at Dominic. Wasn't he very against Dominic being with mommy? No, I think it's more about Dominic cheating on mommy. I could not. I don't. I 
I mean, I mean, when there are pictures of, you know, you know, you know, mommy's husband on mommy's ass. Um, yeah, that, that, this makes me think that mommy's coming back with Buddy Matthews. It does, doesn't it? So, I mean, and honestly, you know what? You know what? Screw it. Bring Alistair back and have him usurp Damien. Hmm. But, the, but what happens to Selena Vega then? She's still with the LWO. So it doesn't matter. She, she can still dress like Street Fighter all she wants. She can Kenny Omega the shit out of that. <laughs> well, she was Demon Slayer on Raw um, last week, so... Uh, I mean, again, remember, Street, Street Fighter 6, one of the few places where you could find an AEW wrestler and a WWE wrestler. How many stars you give this one? Um, I'll be honest, I like the result. Um, I think Dominic should have really kind of tried to act a little bit more. Um, three. I give it three and a half because of the finish. Um, right person won in the right manner, which was Liv Morgan, by the way, of Dominic Mysterio. Uh, now we have a triple threat match, Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable versus Bronson Reed for the Intercontinental Championship, 13 minutes and uh, 40 seconds, it lasted, uh, Sami Zayn picked up the victory. Um, unexpectedly really good actually, um, there was a lot of high points, a lot of, um, creativity, there was a lot of um, just upbeat pro wrestling in this match. And, you know, I attribute a lot of that to, uh, Chad Gable. Um, it worked for me. And the story that they were telling also worked. But, you know, Otis costing Chad the match. Um, but what say you, Scoodle? Um. <coughs> Excuse me. You okay? Ooh. Wrong um, type. Ouch. Ooh, we, we, may have, we may have to edit that. <laughs> wow. Okay, now I know not to do that again. Uh, never, um, never exhale your weed while wearing a uh, facial mask. I mean, and that's good, and it's good, but you're going to choke um honestly i think there was too much with otis and the decision of you know him feeling bad about hitting sammy but not bronson and it was just like like otis make a decision man and it was more of that on raw you know and it's it does have to go somewhere at some point, but... Yes. Um, I mean... N n none of us n thought Sammy was losing. Uh, still, I, I will say, uh, decent, decent match. I'll give it a, yep, I'll give it three and a half. Um, yeah. I'll give it three and a half as well. Uh, Nia Jax defeated uh, Lara Valkyria um, for, to win the Queen of the Ring crown in uh, 9 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, I actually enjoyed this match. Um, it had good pro wrestling logic uh, applied uh, to it. Um, you know, me. Nia was the monster, Valkyria was the, um, you know... Uh, the underdog baby face, uh, and not to mention, like, the way that Nia won the match was, you know, just... This kind of reminded me of... 
I, I really, I don't want to say 95 because we hate 95. Uh, um, but it was all, almost like 94. Uh, with Owen and, and uh, Razor. Um, and it, it, that, that it was just like, it was the right amount of storytelling and the right amount of push yes for the face in that yeah she lost but look at how far she got right you know most of the time we're like damn she should she deserved it she deserved that and and we're you know we're not we're looking at the destination we're not looking at the journey right and that's what you know as the crow flies which I guess surprisingly, she's Lyra is living uh, her gimmick and it's working. <laughs> well, honestly, so hey, I mean, you know, and you didn't expect to like Lyra Valkyria. Um, not necessarily, no. So, I mean, I wasn't I'm... necessarily cheering for her. But, like, I did gasp when, like, Nia murdered her at the end of the match, but she just put all her body weight down on her to pin her. Yeah, that was... Ooh. That was sick. Uh, I also wish that was me. Um, yeah. Gotta pay for that OnlyFans, buddy. She's my mommy. Hmm. How many stars you give this one? Uh... I will I will I will give it three and a half. Uh, I will give it six and a half if I ever find myself in Lyra's position under Naya. Um, you know what? I'll give it four stars. It it hit all the right buttons. <sighs> uh, that brings us to the King of the Ring uh, finals. Uh, Gunther defeated Randy Orton in 21 minutes and 50 seconds. Um, it was a pretty good match. Maybe Miss was missing something. I'm not entirely sure what. Um, but still a good match that kind of ended on a flat note, if I'm being completely honest. Um, Scooter? Yeah, we... I mean, we knew it wasn't going to be Randy. We knew Randy wasn't going to win this. Um, did they need Gunther to win to explain getting a title match at SummerSlam? No, I know because we kind of we kind of knew that you know once he lost the Intercontinental title, where else was he going to go except up? And if he wasn't going to go up, he was screwed. Right. Um, so, I mean, King Gunther, um, I mean, I love the fact that he's like, ah, yes, but none of you are worthy of the coronation, so, you know, no coronation. <laughs> and the simple fact uh, that he doesn't want to wear the crown, either. Which, um, I, I believe is actually... Kind of, I think it's kind of based in the fact that I I, I don't does Austria even have a king anymore? Uh, isn't it King Ludwig? <laughs> um, but nevertheless, um, you know, this is this is like Gunther and Randy would be a match we'd see on a filler PLE. Like a payback, or um, God, I can't remember any other like you know, or or, or a backlash when it's not in France. Uh, yeah, um, a you know, uh, a, a a potential ro you know, Royal Rumble undercard match, a, you know, a SummerSlam filler match. So. I'll be happy, well, since we're not going to see Randy versus Gunther again. Um, I'd be happy if they never, you know, face each other again for 
another some odd years. Both can do better. Um, I'm, I'm this is a, I will I'll give it three. This was an average match, and that's that's kind of disappointing because you kind of have to say this is Gunther's worst performance yet so far. Yeah, you could probably say that. But only because he's had such a spectacular showing. Well, the so, everywhere else. Yeah. yeah. E- even, even his worst is better than, uh, you know, let's say Gable Stevenson's best. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would say maybe a three would suffice for this match. Yep. Yep, I would as well. Yeah, I did. In fact, I did, didn't I? Yep. Uh, oh! And we are being joined by Coleco Yachts. A new challenger has arrived. Yes, I have entered the chat. <laughs> Soccer took longer than expected. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're talking uh, Randy Orton versus Gunto. What was your thoughts on the mat- match, and how many stars do you give it? Ooh. I mean, the ending kind of made it wonky, but it was a good match. If he finished, but at least they acknowledged it, so I guess they give him props there. Uh, it's a solid three and a half. I mean, kind of knew who was winning. Yeah. All right, and that brings us to the main event. Um, Cody Rhodes defending the undisputed WWE Championship against Logan Paul. Um, Logan Paul was defeated in 24 minutes and 20 seconds. Cody retains. Um, it was a great match just to put Cody over, um, and Logan Paul did his job to the T, I would say. Um, I... Yeah, but you know, if you thought Logan Paul was going to win at any time, time in the match, then you know, you're again. I have a bridge to sell you, um, which does kind of uh, take away from the overall enjoyment of the match. But again, it did exactly what it needed to do, which was get Cody more over than he already is. I think honestly, I think I thought the star of the match was Michael Cole. <laughs> um, yeah. You're not I mean, I I thought for a minute that Corey was gonna deck Logan for attempting to get his hands on Michael Cole. You know, it almost seemed that way, didn't it? I yeah, and I would not be surprised if because remember Corey's cleared to wrestle now. Oh, uh, that's right. So, Corey Graves, a uh, Corey Graves Logan Paul match. I mean, especially we never, knew, we never wanted. Especially when it has the potential to get Seth involved, if they really wanted to. Mm. Hmm? Don't know Consider- about that, but I mean, it's just, it's just, I'm just thinking out loud, but you know, fantasy booking and all that. I gotcha. What say you, Coleco? I mean, I, I'm assuming the Saudis wanted Logan Paul, and that's the only reason he was in this match. But I must say, he performs for people who hate him, and he wrestles. He, his schedule's lighter than Roman's, but when he shows up, he shows out. Like, so you got you got to give him props for that. I will say this, I cannot stop drinking Cherry Freeze Prime. The Fruit Punch is the only one that I can um, all, no. withstand. Oh my god, try the Cherry Freeze, it's like it's like drinking Hawaiian Punch bubblegum. I don't know, the grape one tastes like Robitussin to me, for some odd reason. Uh, no, oh, Cherry <laughs> Freeze, I for the love of God, don't, don't, don't drink anything else, maybe the ice pop. But the I cherry, not bad. Oh my god, the cherry freeze. It's like the you ever have seven up gum? Cherry seven up gum as a kid? 
Yes. That's what it tastes like. Really? I'm going to have to right. well, I, I, a shot. I, I, I know you'd appreciate it, Coleco. You and I have the same yeah. taste. I might, I might have to stop by my nearest store then. Right. Um, how many stores do you give this one, um, Scooter? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'll give it four. Coleco. Same four. I agree four. All right. Um, the show as a whole. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle, Scooter. Thumbs in the middle. Coleco. Ugh. That's a ugh. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> what's that? Anyways. Uh, uh, I say three quarters because we got the people that were predicted to win the win. Uh, I, yeah. Like three fourths. Naya shout out. Naya Jack shout out. Redemption story. Think, of all ages. I'll give a thumbs in the middle. Um not it's not necessarily a so I'm going to go back and uh look at, you know, fondly. Um, so yeah. Alright. Um that will conclude our coverage of King and Queen of the Ring. And we are wrestling with... Oh, no. AEW. Oh. Double or nothing. Yeah, really? Yeah, that, was, that wasn't what I we thought we were going to talk about next. Um, <laughs> it... Oh, gosh. Don't even start. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is not this, this so. Um, this whatever. Stop. A, uh, it took place um, last Sunday in Paradise, Nevada, uh, at the um, MTM, yeah, MTM yeah, Grand yeah. Garden Arena. Um, doesn't say attendance, which is not a good thing. Um, but yeah, it was a show that definitely happened, uh, <laughs> uh, depending, you know. Who you ask? I didn't necessarily enjoy it. Um, what say you, Scoodle? Um, I forgot it existed. Damn, y'all are just harsh. No, right now. I, I because <laughs> you know, you, y'all know where I have been, and he, I was home for this, and I still forgot. <laughs> like. I'm like, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, then and then I realized, oh, yeah, I'd rather watch the Rangers. You know, oh, gosh. That actually reminds me. You know, I I didn't actually watch this on Sunday because I wanted to actually enjoy my Sunday. So <laughs> Damn, y'all are just... <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I've spent more time sleeping in hospital recliners than my own bed. In the past two weeks, so what's yeah, say cut, cut, cut me some slack. <laughs> what's say you, Coleco? I mean, it was okay. I mean, it was it was cool. There was flames. <laughs> there was flames. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's your silly point. That was MGM flames. was in the <laughs> second segment. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to help it, you know. <laughs> Perazzo and Rosa was cool. What was it though? Perazzo um, was on the other court. <laughs> that's my point. I'm just, that wasn't even on the same court. I'm, I'm just saying. And then, you know, uh, you know, the the cup and the the uh, trios okay. match. And cocaine. Uh, I, Osprey was there. Let's get into it. 
MJF came back. Please, no. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to. Will Asprey yeah. defeated uh, Roger Cox Strong uh, for yeah, the I, Intercontinental I, I, Championship in 17 minutes and 40 seconds. I, I need a huge toke for this. Um, if I'm being completely fair and somewhat unobjective, it wasn't a bad opener. Um, you know, Roger Strong's a great competitor. Um, why the referee didn't make uh, immediately draw out the match when Wardlow uh, came in, I have no idea, but... You know, AEW logic. So, you know, you're not going to get, you know, a, a, a straight, you know, logical match out of them. So, you know, kind of take it for what it was. It was a decent match. Um, Scooter? Um, at this point, since I didn't see it, uh, but I did say Osprey would win, um, it's clear that they, uh, they're treating Osprey like they're Shawn Michaels. Um, and, I mean, that's that. That's it. <laughs> so you legitimately did not watch the show? I, I legit did not watch. I, I literally, it literally, I was either watching the Rangers or I was so tired that I just slept. I didn't even remember it was on. I said, like, I wasn't kidding. Damn, he was dead ass. <laughs> like, like, I mean, you know, there are times, you know, I'll admit to not watching New Japan, but, you know, at least I'll follow up. I literally forgot Double or Nothing existed. Well, uh, what about, what say you, Kaliko? I mean, it was cool, but, I mean, kind of like, king and queen of the ring you know it was kind of something the people you knew that were going to win you knew that were going to win I, it's just kind of weird that you know that what's it say uh, Roderick has such a short reign with the title lovely a month I would say as he, as he ran into the flavor of the month See, at least with Becky, you knew it was kind of like she came back as she was trying to leave, right? Right. Uh, she came back to fulfill a job and then dipped. As far as Osprey, I mean, Roderick, he just got caught into that buzzsaw known as Will Osprey. Correct. You hate to see it, though. Yeah, yeah, hate to see it. I'll, uh, I'll give this three and a half. Um, can we go? Uh, it's a solid three. I mean, Osprey has done better. All right. Um, then we have the return of MJF. Um, he kicked um, Adam Cole in the nuts. Um, talked about... Um, talked about uh, Vince McMahon in New Japan, uh, and showed off a tattoo uglier than Cody Rhodes' neck tattoo. Well, you know, they re they AEW really likes wasting shit. <laughs> um, that they do. Well, you know, I guess this is the reason that AEW Fight Forever is going to be free on PS Plus and Game Pass now, so. Um, yeah. It personally never been a big MJF fan to begin I, with. But it's like, they're treating this segment like, a, a match, and this is like, like great, okay, it's happened. What benefit does it have for Adam Cole or MJF or the audience? Like, there's no like, ah, oh, showmanship. 
is, is an option in AEW, unless your name is Swerve Strickland. <laughs> I mean, but Swerve got the 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 best song in that damn. Oh yeah. Well, I, I mean, he's got he's got the best you know corner guy too. So. Yep. And, and I don't know why I'm doing it because nobody can see me. Um, but I am smoking a hell of a lot of weed. Ganja, as they say in that joke. No, no, I got I got my, <laughs> no, I got my pre rolls, man. My ganja. How do you think Nada got so skinny? What say you, Kaliko? What are your thoughts on, um... um the skit? Yeah. <laughs> the, the interlude? Yeah. <laughs> now, for our feature presentation. Um... I <laughs> guess it was... I mean, it was good for what it was. I, I, I'm just trying to think, like... <laughs> If if I was a guy that I was the champion and my best friend costed me the title, would I be going back out there to talk or would I be going out there to get back the title? To be the the beat I mean, one, he didn't get a rematch, you're right on that. And two, it would be a serve on site. It it felt like I, I, I would have thought MJF would have had a lot more pissed. Like, he came in the ring pissed. And I'm expecting, like, furniture moving at that point, right? But it's just kind of, I guess cause that's the USWA in me. Because usually when people stab you in the back, you ain't coming back to hug them and kick them in the butt nuts because they already backstabbed you the first time, right? So that's where it just kind of threw me off. And then um, the stuff that he said, I mean, I get it. He, I mean, the don't need the, the New Japan Vince McMahon reference, even though Vince McMahon's not running it anymore. Okay. Um, MJF. Then I guess shows the poker chip and says he's the wolf of wrestling because he ain't leaving. Which I mean, it's good for AEW. I, I would. My thing with MJF has always been he's can talk and then the bell rings. Now, now, not saying that he should go out there and be Daniel Bryanson or anything like that. And he proved himself a bit last year because they wore his ass like no one else <laughs> in the world. Oh yeah, but but. I mean, let's just see where he goes from here because the AEW he left is not the same AEW as he came back because he's not, he's loved, but there's a fl two new flavors of the month yeah. simultaneously yeah. heading toward a collision course. It's like, it's like, it's like trying to make the lost Von Eric brother work. Damn. Damn. Yeah, uh, see, see what I did there. Damn. Hey, hey, I, I, wa I, I watched the Iron Claw two days ago, and there's, oh, uh, there's MJF for two seconds doing his friggin' knee thing that I'm sure Chris Von Eric always did, while refusing to tag Zach Efron. That makes no. That, that that's a that's another heel turn right there. Max, I'm sorry, but refusing to tag Zach Efron in, that is a shame. I fucking know. Hey, you said it, not I. Do we move on, please? Yeah. Now we have uh, the Bang Bang Hub, Jay White and the Ass Boys. Um, de they defeated um, the Bastard Pickpock. Uh, Pentecost. No, the bastard Tupac, and no. <laughs> waka 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 waka. Pentecost Jr. and Ray Felix, um, and for the Unified World Trios Championship in 12 minutes and 20 seconds. You wonder why nobody from AEW will talk to us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait a minute, someone actually talked to us? From AEW? Yeah, nobody has, so. I mean, we we didn't, you actually know. Uh, uh, James loves butchering names. In fact, you are, that's it, you're now the butcher. <sighs> the butcher. Okay, I can deal with that. Uh, let's see, the butcher, the bitcher, and the, the, the superstar maker? I don't know. I am so fucking high. Um, Coleco, what was your thoughts on this match? <laughs> Short for a trios match? In my opinion, a little bit too short, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Uh, out of all the trios um, matches in the world, this was one of them. Correct. I mean, correct, sir. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it served its purpose, and that's all you got right there. I mean, it's not really something to write home about, it's, you know, so. But it was good for what it was. How many stars do you give this one? They did a lot, but I feel like I personally think these type of matches should be going longer, but so a three. I give this one porcelain drone because that's where I was for it. Wow. <laughs> Just harsh. Well, I'm I'm not necessarily telling a lie there. Um, all right. We have the AEW Women's World Championship match: Timeless Tony Storm. With Next. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Next. Wait, wait, hold on. You smell that? I think someone just lit a candle. A pussy scented candle. Um, uh, she was accompanied by Lex Luthor and Mariah Carey, and she defeated Serena Deep, um, in 15 minutes. Um, definitely way too long for a Serena Deep match. Um, I actually did not no. this match. Um. Why was it a Serena Deep match? <laughs> this is the correct answer. Um, but yeah, Tony did what she needed to do, and that was win the match. There was a little bit, a bit of drama with uh, Lex Luger. Um, so, all mm. in all, decent for them. Like I would say, like was Serena used as like a, just another like last minute fuck you to Punk? You're like, yeah, hey, look, we're using the chick you head you shaved. Take that, we think. <laughs> I mean, like it is for such a bloated women's roster. And Serena Deeb, a bloated. I mean, but the thing is, is this is the problem. Tony has kind of ran through everybody. See, you know, could have, could have, could have been, you know, could have been Jordan Grace, Billy Stocks. Well, Jordan Grace is too busy taking on the prodigy. Um, she's wrestling uh, Damian Wayne? The Clitorati. Roxy Perez. We, yeah, we, we, Coleco, we talked about that <laughs> at the top <laughs> of the show. Well, I'm sorry, I'm missing it. That's uh, what happens when you miss inside jokes. I know, but, I mean, there was no way we weren't going to come back to it once you showed up, so. Oh, yeah. Um, of course not. Y'all weren't gonna go back to that or Nia Jack tonight. Neither do I expect you to. Hey. Oh, oh God. James, should I tell him what I said? <laughs> you could. Uh... You know, I, I would. At the end of that match, I would have gladly taken Lyra Valkyria's place. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 I, she could. Yeah. She could sit on me all day long. Yeah, she lost a lot of weight, too. That's what I'm saying, man. She, hey. In fact, I have actually put out on Twitter, it is, I am now asking Naya to please be my mommy. I I said, I will be her footstool, anything she needs. Hashtag, be my mommy, Naya. Yeah, man, she, hey, lost a lot of weight looking right. But that's a whole other story. No, I want her to get it back, man. 
That will conclude the simple first, uh, portion of our show. <laughs> yeah, I'll back to the terrible A shall be the bad. How many shows you give The us? fact that we would rather talk about you wanting to get sat on by yeah. Nia Jax. <laughs> my Nia Jax, my, 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 no, it's not even a fetish. I am in love with Nia Jax. And, you know, I don't care that I have a fiance. Um, Nia, please, you complete me. Uh, a, 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 a negative star, negative one. They know, no, no, because that's giving a minor away. Negative two. Hey, minor. <laughs> that takes us to um, freshly <laughs> pooped Orange Cassidy versus Trent in 13 minutes and 55 seconds. Didn't we like. Yeah, next. I give this one. Two fast forward bars because that's what I did for it. I, I, I give this one uh, two Stevie Wonder King Cobra head sways. Then we have the three way fuck the rules, uh, fuck the world rules match for the fuck the rules, fuck the world championship. That's a tongue twister. Um, uh, just Chris Jericho defeated Hook and Katsuri uh, Shibata Bread. And Shibata 12, Bread. <laughs> and 12 minutes and 40 seconds. Damn um, it, Panarin. Wait, oh, what a waste of a fucking match. Um, Shibata should have not been in it. Nah, um, Shibata nada. And Jericho should have won. Um, it's just a waste of, you know... A it's a waste of good dumb... ball washing. Huh? It's a waste of good ball washing. Yeah. Um, you know, I gave them the benefit of the doubt when they took the belt off Hook, and then they proved me wrong, which I kind of saw coming, so they kind of proved me right. Um, and they just, yeah. So I'm going to actually take a the the original little match between Jericho and Hook. I'm taking a star off of that match. Wow. Yeah, because of this match. I think that's the first time that's ever happened on the show. Guess what? My father washed your balls. What say you, Kaliko? I mean, I told you what this was the last time we went through this. Uh, it was just essentially a Jericho having this title as a F you to the crowd in a sense. Okay. Well, uh, how many stars you give this one, Coleco? I, I mean, I didn't even judge the Tony one, but I guess, I, I mean, Jericho, People are pissed, and that's what he's expecting. So it's a two, just because he's got people pissed about it. Now the question is, what they're gonna do with the bounty hunter man? Cause that motherfucker, please don't fuck him up. I think that was the first time somebody took off a mask and was more confused when they took off the mask. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, it's a masked wrestler, and then he took the mask off, and it was like, who the fuck is that? Put it back on! <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all don't know who Brian Key like. Oh, Brian we know. Key, no, no, no. We know. The cats, what the cats in the know, the cats in the no, no. But the problem is, you're right. The casuals will probably be like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Kind of like Okada, <laughs> kind of like Okada getting uh, debuted in Bonefuck Georgia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we know. We just wanted to put it the fuck back on. Come on, man. Come on. I give him a break. He has no alibi. (laughs) Now we have an an IWGP World Heavyweight Championship Eliminator match. No thanks. No thanks. I went before we started recording. We have um, John Moxicillin um, defeating. Um, called Kutska Take Shitta in 17 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, 
Calico, your thoughts on the match? There was no need for this match. If there were ever not a need, <laughs> this is the one. I mean, because it kind of turned into... I mean, Tak Takashita can go. It's just now tell us now talk now tell us about the Keshta. <laughs> Takashita. I mean, it feels Project Pat. Takashita. That's why I keep thinking in my head. Anyway, Takashita. It's Missy. It's Missy Elliott's new song. But I mean. I get why they wanted the match, but the fact that it wasn't for the title, it kind of made it pointless. But Moxley won, and that was probably what was going to happen anyway. Yeah, you are probably correct on that. <coughs> um, now we have um, um, the edging Adam Copeland. Um, versus uh, Milwaukee Black um, in a barbed wire steel cage match for the TNT Championship in 20 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, if Copeland lost, he would have bent the knee and joined the House of Black. I did not know that. Um, Copeland won in by referee stoppage. Um, talk about a match that was completely unnecessary for a 50 year old man to do um <laughs> what? he wants to go out on his own terms let him go yeah yeah except uh, i don't think this was in his terms yeah i mean he even he said that he was somewhat um idiotic uh, yes to to jump off the cage at fucking 50 years old yeah. Don't necessarily. Well, Sting did it. Shit. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah but Sting did it into like freaking like pads. Yeah, like multiple people. <laughs> well, he's, he's gone, gone now. Like, Copeland was just like pretending he was in the living room jumping off the couch. Be like, K okay, Ruby lyric. Yeah. Are you are you saying are you saying he was pretending it was two thousand and one and he was. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, that's right. Because you know, <laughs> world famous superstar David Heath. No. But yeah, but, yeah. The man, the man who was created. Uh, no, actually, it was the other way around. Edge was specifically created. No, or was it was Gangrel specifically brought in just to battle Edge, or was it the other way around? I think it was the other way. Gangrel was just brought in, like, oh yeah, let's feud the let's feud the two new guys. Yep. I mean, only in Vegas they would find the porn star uh, director. You, you know, <laughs> you, you, you know they they could have used me and his stepdaughter. I mean, I'm just saying they found the they found the porn star director in Vegas. And it wasn't I mean, all Venus. And it wasn't the Godfather. <laughs> yeah. Does he still run those strip clubs? Oh yeah. It, 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 that, it definitely is easy. I might have to go there Mania Week. Um, how many stars do you give this one, Kaliko? I mean, a three for an old man jumping off a cage, thinking that he just had the wherewithal to do all that shit. But yeah, that's about it. Um, I give it three. Um, Gang Girl Pop. Um, not a lot else to kind of write home about. It was long and unnecessary for unnecessary reasons. But for the benefit of those that flash photography. Yeah, their phones died toward this match. <laughs> um,. Then they we totally have um did not read the boss of this. The AEW that bitch show championship match. Um uh, That mostly... bitch show championship. Uh, <laughs> Michelle Monet uh defeated Willow um in uh, eighteen minutes. 
Let's see. Oh, yeah. What did I say last week? I think we all saw this coming, Scooter. I mean... No. What? No. All right, fine. I mean, Stevie Wonder could have saw this coming. Stokely Ray Hathaway. Charles saw that shit coming, and Stokely he did. Hathaway didn't. Um, yeah, well, you know, Stokely has hope in his life, so. Uh, Kalika? Uh, is this the match that they were supposed to have in Japan? I think it's the match they were supposed to have in, um... Uh, Long Beach? Long Beach, yeah. <laughs> it's like, this what would have happened if I hadn't broke, had that bitch break my leg. <laughs> yep. Um, I mean, that's all we can say. It was a cool match. I just hate Willow got the shitty stick again. Yep. My <laughs> Um, and that would, and again, I don't know if I just wasn't into this pay-per-view as much as I could have been. It just seemed like another really long match for, that was unnecessary. Yeah. It also but considering like... that they got time to cook when everybody else kind of had like 11, 12 minutes, I mean. I mean, yeah. every match is... There was like five matches that were f over 15 in, on the show. That's what I'm saying, but that's why I just don't understand. If they had to cut three matches, everybody would have had time to like actually tell the story. I mean, but it's not a, that's necessarily... A, a, AEW has never been a show that tells stories, per se. But, I mean, that's five more minutes of action each way. I mean, this was a show with 12, this was a show with 12 of matches on it. WWE was a, a three-hour show with five matches on it. You kind of understand the sign on that here? <laughs> Save your good shit for the pay-per-views, that's what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> How many shows you give this one, uh, Kaliko? I, uh, three and a half because Willow gave it her best shot to try to break Mercedes' legs so she could... <laughs> <laughs> so that she could do it. But all in all, it, it was a good, solid match. I will give them their props. This was the match they should have had in New Japan. And congrats to that bitch who had celebration cakes and everything and bailey's cakes at the show i mean hey you had bailey's cake yeah like made with bailey's yeah he she, bailey's yams made it made a way to the after party damn uh no i thought it was like made with like bailey's like irish cream <laughs> <laughs> Like, give, give me that. Like, I'll take a Bailey's and, you know, Irish cream any day. I mean, you know, after, you know, a couple of my friends are done with Bailey, she'll have some Irish cream. No, never mind. Uh, I give this oh match gosh. two and a half stars just because it was maybe a little too longer than for my taste. It, it needed some Bailey cream in it. <laughs> That's just disgusting, pervert. Um... Then we have, um, you know, talking about getting the ship, uh, end of the stick, um, Swerve Strickland, in the semi-main event, uh, defeated, um, Christian Cage match with, uh, Luntasaurus, um, Damian Wayne, and Martha Wayne in his corner in 24 minutes and 50 seconds. I love that you're using my 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 name for him. You wanted him to be Bruce Wayne. I call him Damian Wayne. No, I'm talking about Christian Cage match. Oh yeah, but I mean, there's nothing more to really call him. I mean, I call him Christian Cake. Jewish. <laughs> call him Jesus Jewish. Christ. Let's call him Jewish. Oh. <laughs> uh... Uh, Calico Talk. <laughs> 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 
Well, I, yeah, I, he does. The hardest thing about this match is that <laughs> it, it, like, Swerve. Can we go talk? It's, it's almost like Swerve didn't get. He got his due at Dynasty, so they could do this to him at eight at at double or nothing, right? Yeah. Is he um, in this house? Um, yeah, and he swerves in this house. That would be the next one. That'd be dope. But I mean, the right person won once again. It was it was predictable. But what I will say is is that the 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 spear kick call that was nice. I, I give him props where it was. That was a nice spot. And if you caught the photo that was shown on that, it was perfect. Uh, so Swerve got the win, gets his reign, his title reign off to a okay, a solid start beating a solid wrestler. Uh, I just wish it would have been someone where there was more intrigue into it. It's kind of like a, uh, Swerve and Cody are both in the same thing where they both start in their title reigns, title defenses with people that we know that they should have beaten, but it just doesn't really give you that mystique because you know that they're going to win, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the only problem. And th- and that's why I brought in Cody because it's, it's pretty much they're basically on the same parallel swerve, parallel lane, if you will. The difference is Cody got his come up at the biggest show, and Swerve got his in St. Louis. Yeah, you know, in my my opinion, this is the perfect way to kill a babyface run. Um, they put, you know, arguably the biggest star in the semi-main event against no a match somebody that nobody cares about. Um, it had flames. And, you know, at least, you know, with the AJ Styles match with Cody, I mean, you knew that AJ wasn't going to win, but you at least knew that it was going to be, you know, a good technical match, which it was. Well, they're mm-hmm. going to feud again. So, it's so. just, and, you know, Cody's over as a, as a face. And Swerve is, uh, is over as a Over. Face. And it, it, would you have wanted to see AJ and Cody in the semi-main event to, I, what was, oh, the, uh, uh, Bianca and Jay Cargill versus the Kabuki Warriors. Does that make any sense to you? I mean, it doesn't make sense, but I... None of it makes sense. I understand. I just understand why they did it in the first place. And now, you know, go looking to the future slightly. Uh, Strick- Strickland is fighting the next flavor of the month, Will Osprey at Forbidden Door. Um, <laughs> it did that, that, and he just won a title at this pay preview, which makes absolutely no sense. That's why I keep telling you it was it. <laughs> that's why I said Osprey shouldn't have won. It should have been like I mean, even if Roderick had it, took a DQ, it would have looked better. Yeah. Because if you knew you were going to go this route, which I knew they were going to go that route, then why would you waste my time with Swerve with a uh, Osprey winning that title? Right. And, you know, it's just, it, they're killing Swerve's momentum with all of this, especially against putting him against Osprey, who is getting very over with the crowd. Um, you know, it's kind of like if they put Cody versus um, LA Knight, people would absolutely turn on Cody to go with Knight because they want Knight to win the championship. Um... It kills your main championship baby face. And it, I'd say I would say Cody versus Uso. And I would say Uso because the history is there. You could those they're friends, 
you can honestly see that they could have a competitive championship match where, you know, there would be no. But the crowd would, 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 but the crowd would murder Cody for Ooze. I would debate you on that, but um, it's just. Well, why did we invest all this time and effort into Swerve, uh, Swerve if he was going to lose the championship two months after getting it? You know what I mean? True. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, I give this three stars. Kalika? <laughs> yeah, it's a three. It's, it's a three. It's a solid three. Uh, good match. I... Like I said, just you knew who was winning. Yeah. And then we got the shit show, Anarchy in the Arena. Um, it had flames. <laughs> we got the young fucks. Um, Damn, you just like <laughs> Matt and Nick. Um, Jesus Christ. Fat and dick. <laughs> he just said the young fuck. Wow. Oh uh, no no uh, no. Fat and prick. There we go. Um. What could we call Okada? Let's just call him Okada. Um. Oh not Okada. Okada. The the, our, the wrestler yeah. formerly Bull, the wrestler formerly Bull, known Bull as Okada. Okada. Bull Okada. Bull Okada. No, the wrestler formerly known as Okada. Bull Okada. <laughs> then we have um. Jungle Boy, still not yet a jungle man. Um, they defeated uh, Daniel, don't call me Brian Danielson, Debbie Allen, and Cass and Dax. Um, yeah, it was what it, they said it was. Um, a shit show, um, 29 minutes, 55 seconds. Um, slightly enjoyable, I would say. <laughs> This was a, this was a, about as enjoyable as a fart in church. It had flames. Y'all laughing, it had flames though. <laughs> so did the fart in church. It just did. Oh, Jesus. I cannot with y'all today. That was. Uh, again, I, I'm very high. I will say that there was some enjoyment. Um, the fact that they had to cut. Oh, uh, you know, the final countdown. Final so, countdown. But, uh, because it was too expensive, that was funny. Um, you know, not necessarily in a good way, but, you know. Um, Tony Savani was on it. Was that the bus that hit Darby Allen in New York? Um, uh, no. It, the, uh, New York buses don't say scapegoat on the top of them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, why? Yeah. Uh, well, some of them do. Um, why Darby was in a, a crate of, um, garbage, I don't know why. Why Jack Perry knocked himself out while driving through it, I have no idea. Um, like Coleco said, there was flames, um, which was weird. <laughs> um. It was like doll scene, yoga flame. <laughs> and, uh. Yoga then, asshole. You know, I will, <laughs> I will give Darby props. He he was not in great con uh, in great condition before the match started, and he still did the match. Um, it doesn't look good on Tony Khan, but you know that's another story. Um, and the for simple fact that they hung him up and did not bring him down, and the crowd started chanting, "Please help Darby." Uh, tells you that even they have more remorse than the AEW backstage people. <laughs> uh, Please help. Yeah. Please help, Darby. <laughs> da, 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 da. 
you know, and these are the same people that that chat. We want fire <laughs> one more table, uh, one more time. You know, the most cold and heartless fans. You know, even they have sympathy for Darby at this point. Oh my maybe god! Maybe they owe him money. Maybe, uh, maybe, he, maybe he owes him money. I don't know. Calico, uh, what was your thoughts on the match? And do not mention fire. <laughs> <laughs> we're flames I'm just <laughs> it, it was basically it, it, what, it was what it was man I, it, the, at least the right team won did they know yeah, yeah cause it wouldn't have made sense for the Bucks to lose to Darby Allen, just for Darby Allen to come back and be color purple Sisley and just overcast the Bucks like that. Oh wait, 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 hold on. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing? Uh Oh, I had a clip of it. I was playing it. Please, they were playing. Please, uh, I'm playing the clip of Please Help Darby. Please Help Darby. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that, that's, that tells you everything you need to know right there. Give him insurance. <laughs> no, uh, damn it. What, uh, no Blue. deductible. Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Hey, that's actually what my fiance has. <laughs> yeah, Blue Cross Blue Shield clutch. Yo. Yeah, you, you yeah. don't need that. Sh- yeah, but I, ironically, they're they're now Anthem. Yes, Anthem Blue Cross. Yes, they are clutch. Who Just actually like this- owns TNA? TNA. <laughs> <laughs> and that will do it. <laughs> Go to TNA, Dorothy. You'll get a good insurance. <laughs> Look, it's so kind of help care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God, I'm done. I am so... Yeah, it'll be the first one the WWE says, we're not signing you because you're just too fucking dangerous. Oh, yeah. And, and believe me, that, that, that's something they never said to, to Sabu, so... Be like, you're a, you're a, you're a health risk. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, ha- hey, Darby, have... You know what? You know Triple H say, hey, hey, Darby, have you ever actually considered learning to wrestle? <laughs> oh, God. My pants. It's like, yeah. The health risk. We just can't take you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the insurance won't cover you, man. Like, sorry, your deductible's like, too high. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're like, ni- you're like 95% Different people. Oh, so. oh God! Please. Here we go. Thumbs up, thumbs oh, down, thumbs oh. in the middle. Oh, for the show or just yes. for the flames? <laughs> no, just so. <laughs> thumbs in the middle. It's a thumbs in the middle because I knew who was gonna win. They had some good spots. I wish they had it gave more wrestlers time to cook and actually tell the stories that they wanted to tell. And I know we keep harping on that, but I'm going to keep saying it till they goddamn correct it. And then... Flames! And flames! And then, uh, let's see. What right, well, you know what? Let me ask y'all. What, what was, well, Scooter didn't watch it. Yeah, match, of, right. match, match of the night was... When it ended. <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 was, it was a fan versus the exit. When I, when I watched, I can't, I can't. I can't. I'll do one better. When I watched Monday Night Raw, the cage match between Becky and Liv, that I watched mm. after this. Be- so you watch Becky and Liv after this? Yes. Oops, they did it again. Oh gosh, man, y'all are cold. Um. 
I guess oh yeah, the Britney Spears uh, outfit inspiration. Right. Coleco, can you tell? Can you tell me whose outfit was uh, Becky's inspired by? Someone said Austin Powers, and I just started crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that 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 that's quite clever. Uh, whoever whoever said, whoever said that is a complete. <sighs> Whoever said that is a complete mm. retard. Um, but they were uh, both Britney, no, right? No. Really? No. no. Uh, uh, Becky was Anne Hathaway from The Devil Wears Prada. Oh, and Liv must have been the devil. <laughs> well, I, mean, from, from, I mean, from Oops, I Did It Again to wear all that, you know, vinyl. I mean, I'm just... I'm just can, following can, can you. Can you imagine how it would have felt if she had just ripped one in, the, in, the, in that attire? Um, it would have. It would have. It would have never left. Yeah, it would have been over. You, you know, you know what she said to Dom after the cage match of the kiss? It's like you smell that, right? I give a W double or nothing a thumbs down. I did not enjoy the show. And that will conclude this episode. I give it an oil check. Oh, I thought you said an oil change. Maybe that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. That will conclude this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I don't know why. You... Enduring. Yeah. I... Enduring. Yeah, I don't know why you you've gotten this far. God bless you if you have. If you'd like to know where I got my weed. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if you like what we're doing, God knows why, please like, subscribe, comment, put on YouTube and Castbox. This is sponsored by Rogue Energy and Play All One Coffee. Uh, join oh, us this gosh. Tuesday as we interview Paige Rollo, this Wednesday as we interview Joe Bravo. Uh, and join us uh, and follow the show at Wrestling with me, put on X and Instagram for information on who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews, and so much more. Follow me personally at JamesJ993. Where can we find Coleco? I am Coleco, and I gotta send you them photos. Luke from Lucha Vavoom. Shout out, they had two shows. Hmm. I think that's the. Ooh. I think that is my new favorite wrestling promotion yeah, of all time. Good. Are we uh, getting our uh, Coleco's Chronicle? Yeah, but I have to be careful because they have a burlesque show mixed with all this. <laughs> so well, I mean, that's the boom. I mean, that's what's going to get us the views, man. I mean, hey. Hey, hey. Uh, hey. Um, really? Really? You have to be careful when you do a podcast with a guy who used to run around in fish nets and high heels every weekend in New York City. I think you're okay. <laughs> Uh, and Scooter, where can we find you on... As always, find me on X at ScooterDust. And in case nobody uh, got it right, remember, my Twitter profile pic is, in fact, uh, my asshole covered in cysts from Crohn's made to look like an angry Pac-Man zombie. <laughs> well, it looks... And it, the thing is, is that I didn't Photoshop it. <laughs> That's right. I am getting away with having a picture of my asshole as my <laughs> And it's been that way for uh, almost like almost a year now. I am so oh god. <laughs> for Kaligo Yachts and Scooter Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling with... <laughs> he tried to blow right back! <laughs> Entertainment. Claims! Who is a fart in charge? Oh, shit. Hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.